Oh. Yes, I'll try to do this in 10 minutes or less. No, no. <laughs> um, we'll, yeah, all right. So I'm talking about chapters 11 and 12 from the um, functional programming in Scala book. Um, so it's going to include functors, monads, applicatives, and traverse, traversables. So it's quite a dense um, collection of uh, algebras, I guess. So. Um, yeah, um, I, I encourage you to interrupt and heckle if, if, if you want, um, or if I've, I misspeak, which I frequently do, um, saying something uh, that, that's wrong, um, or you just want to ask a question at the time, because I'll probably uh, forget, <laughs> or you'll probably forget too. All right, so the first, the first chapter is on functors. So in the previous uh, chapters of the book, you will have implemented map for option generators and parsers. So, um, if you line them all up in a, um, using spaces, you can see that they're all basically the same except they vary on the type of the parameter. So what you can, what you can do is, is basically pull up the common um, abstraction into a type. So you've got um, a functor trait that has a map and you've basically parameterized the type into the, um, into the F. Um, so you've made, you've made it generic on the F. So you can do a similar, um, you can then take that um, trait and implement it for each of, the, each of the types, basically flipping it around. So you're calling map on each of your implementations. And again, they sort of line up nicely and you can see that you can create functors for all the different types that you've previously created and um, they throw in list as well, just to see that, you know, there's many implementations of um, functor that you can do. Um, so why did, why did you bother doing that? So apart from like, I guess removing the duplication, um, you can then implement other functions on top of this, this abstraction. So um, the examples they give are distribute and co-distribute, um, where uh, you basically take a, um, an, sorry, <laughs> an a, and a, a and a B and you're um, basically combining them. Uh, sorry, that's, that's the other one. So the, the first one is un, unzip basically, so it's containing two pairs and it creates uh, and you create two functors containing the a, the a and the b. Yeah. Um, and functors obey uh, the functor laws. So you've got the identity law, which basically says it preserves the structure. Um, and then you've got the um, associative law. So you basically can compose two functions and map them, or map one function and then the other, the other one. So you've, you've got these basic properties of um, ID and associativity um, in, within these laws. So that's, that's um, functor. So basically you've just got this, this map um, function. So the, the next one is monad. Um, so you can't do a lot with map, map, like you can't implement many functions on top of map. Um, so uh, what happens if you sort of add a, add a bit more functionality, a few more types? Um, so um, they mentioned map2. And this take this is a function that takes two arguments. Um, so for option, um, it takes two options and a function and produces a new value. Um, if they're sum or if if any of them are none, it just returns none. Um, ge generators basically combines the two values into into one and it'll return the combined results as a as a single structure. And parser par is very similar as well. <coughs> Um, and again, we'll, we'll do the same trick that we did with, with functor and try and um, implement a, a common set of uh, functions and then, um, and then abstract it on that. So you've got um, a monad, which extends functor, um, and you've got the unit and flat map, which are not implemented, and then you've got map and map2, which are implemented in terms of flat map and, and unit. So if, if you have a... Um, if you have an implementation of monad, you just implement unit and flat map, and you get map and map two, two for free. So um, here's an example of generator. So um, like functor, you, you're sort of just calling existing um, existing methods that you've already implemented. So uh, we've now got a generic trait, um, and we've got map and map two for um, for generators by just reusing some some existing code. Um, that we've already implemented, plus the um, implementation of monad. Um, and given that it's a bit more powerful than 
um, functor, it gives you a little bit more um, ability to implement other, other functions on top of um, Map and Map 2. So um, if you go through the exercises, you, um, you're, you're asked to implement traverse and sequence, which seems to be a common theme throughout the book. Um, <laughs> going back to, I think, some of the first chapters. Um, you also got replicate M, which calls a sequence n times, so do, do something um, n times on a, on a monad. Um, you've got product and, and filter, so you just sort of filter on a function and you, you take a list in and you only get the um, list back with um, the ones that um, meet that uh, function. Um, and, and again, um, there are some laws which um, your implementation has to obey. So you've, you've again got the, the identity and um, associativity laws, um, and, and they're um, very similar to the, to the functor laws. Um, so that's, I guess that's one definition, which is to say that you know, the monad is just an implementation of the monad combinators and it satisfies the laws of, of associativity and identity. It's true if a little un unilluminating. It's like, what does that mean to me kind of thing. So they, they, they try and extend it a little bit and give you some um, further examples of, of implementations of Monad. So one of the simplest ones, which um, I think you have to implement but isn't in the, in the chapter <coughs> notes exactly, is the identity Monad. So all this really does is, ma is wrap a value up in, um, in a Monad. So you've, you've got... Um, You've got map and flat map. <clears throat> um, basically, flat map just applies the function, and map wraps the uh, result of that function in, an, in, a, in another um, ID one add. Um, and that's the that's the further implementation details down there of um, of ID one add. So, how would you how would you use this? So, you've got um, you're wrapping a string up in ID one add. I call it flat map, and another one with one add exclamation mark. And you basically combine it with plus. Um, and similarly, you can wrap this up in a four, four compench, which is like syntactic sugar for, for flat map in, in Scala. So you've got basically an A and a B storing onto those, holding onto those values, and um, then you're combining them and returning them um, within another um, ID, ID one add. Um, and what they're, what they're basically saying in this example, it's a bit like just having an A and a B, setting them up as a string and concatenating them together. Um, because, you know, there's basically ID one that isn't really doing anything, it's just, it's just a container. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a context for introducing and binding variables, so it's, it's like your A equals um, and, and provides you that substitution. So wherever you see an A, you can just replace it with um, the, you know, the result. Um, another example uh, is the state monad. Um, and this is where <laughs> the syntax in uh, Scala kind of fights you a little bit with, <laughs> with the type synonym, type lambdas. Um, so basically a state monad has, you, you have the, the state s, but you also have a second type, um, which can be anything like an integer or a string or whatever. So you sort of have to say, uh, that, you sort of have to say that there's this second, and, and this, there's this second parameter, the second kind um, that it takes in, um, which you sort of have to do with this this, um, this type lambda. Um, so it lets you basically create a state model with two two kinds, this s and the and the kind that you want it to be. So here's an example of, of using integer, and now we've we've implemented zip with index. Um, using the state on it. So it's um, getting the state, it's adding one to it, and basically you're creating a list with um, an index starting, you know, starting from zero, accumulating through, um, and then printing, printing them out in the right order with, with the reverse. Um, so that sort of gives you another view um, of a monad in that it's um, specifying what occurs at the state statement boundaries. So this is kind of like the programmable semicolon, I guess, idea. Um, so ID doesn't really do anything except sort of hold on to the value. State, you have this extra like variable that you can then get and set. Option will either um, 
quit, on none, or continue. Um, list is basically just a container that, that collects up all the results. Right. So this is, um, a workmate says this is um, Neil Armstrong playing space tennis, I think. Anyway, it's a meme that I was unaware of. It's, it's a game called Super Breakout anyway. Um, so, um, all right, so we're on to applicatives. So again, um, their favorite example is sequence and traverse. Um, but this time we're implementing in time in terms of uh, unity map two. So you, you can basically see um, sequence is calling traverse and traverse is calling map two. <coughs> and something, yeah, where is unit? Yeah, and unit as well in there, inside the fold, right? Um, so, right. So it's less powerful. So we've sort of taken away flat map from from Monet. Um, so we've, it's it's less powerful than Monet. So you can't you can't flat map, but it is more general. So we can obtain uh, different kinds of abstractions by just letting um, everything be implemented in terms of unit and map map two. Um, right. Yes. So again, uh, like like Functor and Monet before it, we've got this applicative trait. Um, we've got the primitive combinators that you have to implement and the derived combinators that you get for free. So you get map and traverse if you implement map2 and, and unit um, uh, in, yeah, for, for your implementation. So how does applicative compare to monad? So this is an example using um, monad where we get the ID for Bob and we get his ID. And then we use that to query our department and salary maps, and then we return those. So you've got this um, first statement that you depend on, which is get the ID of Bob. So that's sort of the fourth last line there. Uh, IDs by name, get Bob. And yeah, and then you're calling the, the map, and then you're returning it, saying, you know, Bob's department is blah, and his salary is, is so on. So what would the applicative version look like that? So, because we can't depend on um, statements in applicative, so you can't say one follows the other, you, you sort of have this different structure where you've already sort of um, taken the IDs away and you've got everyone by the string, so you, you're getting Alice and you're getting Alice's department and salary by the string. So they both go off, you don't, you know, there's no particular order in which they run and then they come back and um, combine and you get the, the returning value. Um, another example. Is, is so when you've got um, parsing a series. Oh, yep. Sorry, a question on the last slide. Um, when you say the order is not defined, does it so if like they'll always both both of those lookups will be run? Yeah. Even if one of them fails. Yeah. Oh well, you you don't really you're not really handling failure, I guess. At, at um, I mean, if if either of them say return none. Um, I guess you know the return values would be none and none and some. I guess so. In that in that respect, they're independent. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't, yeah. Both Wouldn't it depend on what the JVM does with it, right? Oh, it could throw an exception. Yeah, or it could. Um, yeah, I mean, just wait. I mean, is it strict or or non-strict? Yeah. Well, you don't. Yeah, you don't really know. No, I guess it could be either. I mean, I agree. It doesn't matter in terms of what the result is. But then, um, in terms of whether both of those get executed or not. Do you know? It's okay by default, isn't it? I have no idea. I've never I think it, is. it is. So in this okay. example, um, if you would put uh, the lazy keyword before each of the two vowels at the top there, then uh, assuming the definition of map two is defined to be like call by name parameters, then like the second one wouldn't get evaluated if the first one were none. Mm -hmm. um, if all those conditions are met, then yeah, it wouldn't. Evaluate unnecessarily. Would, would it also be that map two, like evaluation to the option, is kind of up to the runtime? But map two gets to decide it's how it looks at the option. So, um, one example that is probably in Scala Z still is either versus validation, where validation will look at both effects and if they fail, it will combine the errors, while either will look at the first one, if it fails, it will never look at the second effect. So that's and that's in the map two definition for those things. Yeah. 
So for unpacking at least a text, it's yeah, it's up to Matt too. Yeah. Cool. Right. So um, here's another example. Um, so you've got a CSV with a heading, uh, temperature and date, um, which allows you to um, implement the monad parser, where you get the row of the of the file, so you, you know um, which column the date and the temp, uh, date and temperature are in, and then you can basically choose which column then that you want to treat as a as a um, date and the other one as a double. Um, with with applicative, you don't um, you basically have to set up your file ahead of time and say this one's the date and this one's the um, temperature column, and then you basically just parse each row. Saying well, it, it, you know, it, it's fixed. It's always going to be one, one than the other. Um, so yeah, and this is kind of a s summary of applicative versus monad. So the, the structure of our computation is fixed with applicative, um, and with monad, the results of the previous computation can influence um, the following any any computations that follow it. So uh, applicative is context free, and the monad monad allows for um, you being sensitive about what context you're in. Um, so when would you use these things? Um, so applicative, because there are fewer um, implementation assumptions, you've just got map two rather than flat map. It, it's potentially easier to <laughs> implement, um, or it gives you more options to implement things that you may not be able to implement as a monad. Um, and things being weaker than a monad means that, yeah, it's basically <coughs> Um, allows more optimization as well. So one, one example that you can't implement as a monad is um, infinite streams. Um, so we might prefer not to have the facility to be able to read the previous lines dependent on other lines. So you, you might actually design as, as an API constraint as well. You're like, I don't, I don't trust the developer to hold on to these things. Um, I'm only giving you an applicative um, interface to this, to this infinite stream. Um, so yeah. You, you're sort of saying here are the constraints of my API in a way that um, possibly you can't do in other interface, you know, in other interfaces. Um, and similarly, with uh, like Nick was saying, with validation. So if you've got a web form, for example, and you've got three fields, you want to make sure that all all three fields are validated before you say, is it okay or is it um, is there, are there any errors? So if you had a flat map, potentially you'd just stop at the first one and not know whether the following two fields were. Um, valid or not. So you sort of say, it, is any of the fields valid? Um, now, <laughs> uh, this is quite a screen full of laws, but I mean, basically, it has identity, it has associativity, and it has something called naturality, which is um, a sort of a, a way of composing um, uh, the transformations before you go off and call map two. So you, it, it's sort of saying you can apply transformations to your values beforehand, call map two, or call map two, and apply the transformations, and you should, you'll get the same same results. Um, and there's no left or right bias. So you're not saying um, um, that if I if I zip left or zip right, I get two different results. Um, you can only you can only do it um, one way. Right. So. Traversable functor. So um, <laughs> this is sort of like a party of algebras because um, pretty much every everything gets used except for monad. I think in in the implementation of this one. So it's it's basically taking all the stuff that we've learned before and and sort of combining it into <laughs> the grand implementation of traverse and sequence. Um, I don't know. So I've tried to include <laughs> this. Is, this is the best version of traverse and sequence you'll ever find. <laughs> um, so you create. It's basically taking. Um, it's abstracting traverse and sequence. Um, again, a lot like what we've seen before. Um, and they're, they're both implemented in um, um, in terms of traverse. And traverse is uh, implemented in term. Uh, yeah, in terms of map. Um, and then the question becomes, what's the implementation of map? So. Um, we've seen that before, and that was found in Functor. So um, we now extend Functor and um, use its implementation of Map basically. Um, but that 
that's one of the exercises in the in the book. So I'll leave that as a as a question mark. Um, uh, yeah, it does actually use. Yeah, I won't give away the answer, but yeah, I was I was wrong in what I said before. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> uh, so if you if you sort of squint a little bit, um, and if you if you've done the previous chapters with with fold, fold map, you'll see that it kind of the the um, the implementation um, yeah the implementation of traverse um, we can uh, we can use traverse to implement fold map and fold left. So it kind of looks a, a, a lot like fold fold map. Um, but we need basically a monoid. So it, they basically take um, monoid and wrap it in, a, in an applicative interface. So um, the zero becomes unit and map two becomes op or, or append. And so then that's used. Um, in in the implementation of fold map, so I mean it's it's sort of buried down in the land. Yeah, there it is. There. So enjoy. So we've gone through a lot of <laughs> we've gone through a lot of uh, pain, I guess. Um, and so what you know, what what has that given us? So. Um, if we have if we have traverse over a list, we can basically take a list of option and create an option of, of list. So if you if any of the uh, elements in the list become none, it returns none, or it returns a sum of with a list. And similar with with trees. And for parallel, it um, eval evaluates everything in parallel and then combines them. Um, so traverse keeps the original structure, unlike fold map, um, and it. And it replaces it with the um, append function in, in monoid. So here's another uh, example of traversing over a state. So um, you've now got a generic state um, implementation. So you can take a list or a tree, add state like index of like we saw before, and, and traverse over it, keep, um, keeping a Keeping account. So here's some of the implementation. So you've got zip with index and two lists. So two lists, for example, will take a tree and sort of splat it out into a list. Um, zip with index will, will again do that thing where it starts with zero, uh, apply, you know, applies the function and increments the counter each time. Um, but you can sort of see there that there's a structural kind of duplication. So Every time we're getting something, and then we're setting something, and then we've got this little function that we're calling. Um, so, what what they do is they create this map accumulation. So, it, it's abstracted out the the getter and the setter, and basically you're just left with the function um, to list and zip with index um, as the varying part that you're calling. Um, so, um, yeah, traversable gets you. Other abstractions that you can build upon, upon it. So this thing could, um, so you can zip, zip with the same size, or you can say I take two lists, and if the left one or the right one are, are bigger, I'll, um, I'll I'll choose that one to sort of um, go over and pick the ones out of the smaller one, for example. I hope that makes sense. Um, and it also lets you um, combine nested structures. So you've got a list inside an option inside a map. Um, and that sort of points to the traversable laws. So the first one is very familiar to um, what, we've, what we will have seen. So it's identity, and then you've got the, um, the fusion law. So you can traverse F and G, or you can um, create a composite F and G and sort of call over the top of them. Um, so in, in summary, I guess, you've got this combination of algebras, so we've sort of built up traversable on top of the others, um, you know, an applicative in mind in terms of the ones that have come come before it, come before it. So, um, yeah, so applicative can, um, I'll start again. So mon mono lets you append, um, the functor lets you map, applicative lets you do, do, do both, and, and sort of mono lets you 
have that extra sort of um, de dependency. Um, and this this sort of shows the the once you get to the end of the um, uh, exercises, you sort of have built up this hierarchy of um, traits where they're all sort of depending on one another. So um, you sort of have functor and foldable sort of as your base, and then applicative and monad um, sort of building on each other and traversable sort of off, off to the side, but there's sort of dotted arrows because it, it kind of pulls in the other ones as well in its implementation of the, the functions and the reuse. Um, so I, I fairly ripped through that. <laughs> um, yes. That's the cool. Yep. Can you explain that uh, monoid applicative business again? Yeah, sure. I'll bring up the slide. So it, it, it takes a it takes a monoid, right? As it's as it's um, as it's M, and it's basically using the so the yeah so the unit. <laughs> um, is basically the yeah the, the monad zero and the map two is just calling. Um, so if you give me any monad, I'll give you an applicative instance. Yeah. Well, why would why would you want that? So the idea was to um, re um, basically uh, use it in ter in um, in terms of the fault in terms of the fold map. So the, the traverse needs an applicative. So um, mm -hmm. I think, so you, um, it was basically simpler, I think, to use the, um, to build the, yeah, so it's sort of wrapping, so you've got the traverse wrapping the applicative, wrapping the, mo the monoid. So you've got this kind of three levels of um, usage there. All right, I'll look at it. Yeah. It's, it's making apply basically independent so that every yeah. traverse is just independent. Yeah, I mean, I see what it's doing, but I don't know why you. Do you know in, in our school the um, const new type? Yeah, sure. New type const s, uh, s a is yeah. const s, right? Then we can give that thing an applicative if s is a monoid. So okay. this is basically that, except Scala's like a bit weird, and we can do type aliases that just throw away structure. Yeah. Um, what is okay, what's no, the, actually that was, yeah, thanks, that makes sense. What's the advantage of doing a traverse this way? Like what, what do you get out, and what does it give you over just using foldable, this fold map? Oh, hang on, fold map is part of foldable or traverse? This hierarchy. It's, it's foldable. Okay. It's inheritance going on. So it's like so you two levels of map oh. with traverse. So yeah. you can yeah. traverse and then you get the yeah, previous trees. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Which yeah. is <laughs> so this is just this iteration of let's implement all of the abstractions in terms of all the other abstractions. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. been going on. Okay. So, so that's really understood. If I, I think if you missed one of my steps, it's easy to well all the steps in the book. So they seem to have a very clear path through the book that you have to follow. Um, and, and literally when I was doing it, if you missed an exercise, you, you would easily not understand the rest of the, well, the rest of the two chapters. You know, like if you missed it in chapter 11, you'd, you'd completely miss chapter 12 kind of thing. So it, it takes you many iterations, I think, to go through these um, things to get, yeah, it clear in your head. But it kind of builds, I think they're purposely trying to make it like, um, each step building on the previous step, but it does get a little convoluted, I think, as, as well. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Any more questions? Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah.